Number 17. What does it mean to say that the energy of the electrons in an atom is quantized? In order to understand this, let's first draw a picture, right? Now, remember back in chapter one, we have the nucleus of an atom, right? And what is included in the nucleus of an atom? There's basically three subatomic particles that you need to know, protons, neutrons, and electrons, but only two live in the nucleus. 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 What two are they? Well, they're the protons, which are positive, and the neutrons, which are neutral. So I'll just put a zero with the slash. So in the nucleus only resides protons and neutrons, and that's where the bulk of the mass of the atom is. Now, where do the electrons live? Oh, well, they live outside of the nucleus in the electron cloud, they call it. And the electron cloud looks like bigger and bigger and bigger circles as you go more away from the nucleus. So, for example, if I draw this as my first electron cloud, quote unquote, the next one would be a bigger ring that just, you know, lives closer um, or we could say lives more farther away than the nucleus. And as you can see, it just keeps going and going and going as, as I'm getting away from the nucleus, they become bigger and bigger circles. Now, these circles represent the shells of the electron cloud. And another way of saying shell is the principal, principal quantum number. Quantum number. And these numbers, which represents as N, they always start with number one as basically called the first shell. That's why we don't have zero shells because this first shell would be classified as N equals one. It's the first shell right off of the nucleus. So my quantum number, my principal quantum number, my shell has to start with number one and technically can go all the way to infinity, technically speaking, but we could just see here that we have one, two, three, and then if you keep drawing bigger and bigger and bigger circles, you will get to four, five, and six, et cetera, et cetera. So this would be n equals two, and then this would be n equals three. So we have three total shells here, all of which have electrons living in them. Now, just know that electrons can only live in the direct shells. So let's just say that there's two electrons here, you know, and then there's one here and whatever, one over here. We don't, we're, in, I'm not, um, talking about the total amount that, you know, can reside in the nucleus for now. That's for later questions, but just know that the electrons can only live in these specific shells. Now, the cool thing is that electrons can jump, right? This electron can maybe jump to the N equals three shell. And maybe electrons that are here can jump back and forth. So that's the word for quantized. Quantized means that basically the energy and the electrons can jump from shell to shell. And because of this, it has a specific number that you can actually calculate right? Quantized also means, so it means two things, electrons and the, and their energies can jump from shell to shell. Like I just illustrated, it has a specific number and also it cannot live within the shells. So no electron will ever be located here, right? In between two and three. An electron has to either be in shell two or it has to be in shell three, but it will never be found halfway in between any of them. So halfway between one and two, halfway between two and three, et cetera, et cetera. And also they do not transition smoothly, transition smoothly, which means that they don't just glide over, right, and take their time. They literally jump. So they hop, boop, to go from N to 2 to 3, and vice versa. All right? So basically, all of these is what quantized means. So the energy of the electrons, they can jump from shell to shell. It will have a specific number that you can calculate. 
and it cannot live within the shells and it does not transition smoothly, it jumps. So I'll put that there as well. All right. And also one last thing that you should know is that as you go from the nucleus outward to higher and higher and higher shells or larger and larger principal quantum numbers, just know that the energy that's found there in the larger numbers has higher energy. So the more farther away that you go, the more farther away you go out of the nucleus, the higher the energy is going to be. And the higher the energy just means more unstable. So more energy means more unstable, more, you know, instability in terms of chemistry world. All right. So hopefully this helped. Let me know in the comments what you thought. If I can answer any of your questions that you might still have, I would love to do that. Um, yeah, click the subscribe button if you want to get all the questions in your feed when we next release them. But other than that, I mean, study hard, guys. Hope you're, you know, having fun learning chemistry. It's pretty cool. I really like chemistry. Um, but yeah, I'll see you guys all in the next question. Bye-bye.